job, Eldora. Thank you. All right. Well, guess what? We're going to pause from the book of Romans for, the, for this next month here. It's been great going through the book of Romans. And I was telling Pastor Cody, I, I've changed a lot because when we planted the church, we did a lot of one-month series, and they're very topical. And now that we have an opportunity to do something different, I'm, I'm, we're doing expository preaching just from a different book of the Bible. <laughs> so we're going to spend the entire month going uh, through Matthew chapter 7, specifically Jesus talking about the same thing in a different way four different times. He's talking about the end times, which is called eschatology. And he gives four analogies, and he gives two choices for each analogy, which is why this series is called Two, What Choice Are You Going to Make? Now, before we dive in, church family, can we welcome any new guests online, any new people here in the gathering today? We are so glad that you are here, that you have joined us as we kick off this new series. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the two builders. Now, Dr. Tony Evans tells a story of how one of his friends had cracks on his wall in his bedroom. And so he called one of his friends and he said, hey, will you come and fix the cracks? So the guy came and he mudded and then he sanded and then he painted and everything was great. Well, a week later, the guy was going into his bedroom again and he saw the cracks show back up again. And so he called his friend and he said, what is it happening? He's like, the cracks are, are back. I thought you fixed it. And he said, I did fix it. But the problem that you have is much bigger than cracks in your bedroom wall. It is much deeper, right? It's a problem with the foundation. And unless you solve the real problem, it will never go away. See, we excel in our culture in making things look polished or good. We like to make things that maybe appear to be great, but on the interior, it is a wreck. And we're just experts at, at doing that. I remember when I was, uh, my kids were small. How many of you ever played uh, like building blocks with your kids before? Yeah, and, and I don't know if it's just you or it's just my competitive nature, but I used to love to see how high you could go before they would fall. What, what, what would determine how high you could go was the, the foundation of bricks that you had uh, or blocks you had on, on the bottom. And see, and at, at some point in of, our, of our lives, we're going to go through a storm. And when we go through a storm, it will reveal the level or the significance of our foundation. And, so, and some people have their foundation built on a lot of things. Some people put their foundation on accolades, applause from other people. Some people build their foundation on money or their career or their job. Other people build their foundation on potentially sports and just um, what they could do or activities. Many teens find their foundation, even adults, on just fitting in, just being accepted, being liked. See, these are all things that we place our value and our worth in. But when we make that our priority at some point in our lives, that foundation is going to be tested. And it's, it's kind of like, like this. I want you to check out this quick, quick video. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. So there was this awesome house right on the water until it wasn't. <laughs> until it came in. And see, the storms in our lives are great indicators and they're great revealers of what foundation we have built our life on. Because all of our lives are built upon a foundation, and it's going to be tested. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to see that, that those who build on a solid foundation withstand not only the storms of life, but will be standing as well securely when they stand before God, when they stand before judgment. We're also going to be reminded that that once again, that education and information do not automatically equal transformation. That we, if we're ever going to be deceived by that, 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 that thought, it is in this day and age when we are inundated with information. 
But Jesus paints a clear picture that we could stand firm when we see him face to face. And so I want you to repeat with me. We have a slogan that I have you repeat. It's something I love to do, and I make the staff do it (laughs) when they preach as well, just because I want to keep consistent. But our slogan this morning, if you could repeat it with me nice and loud, say, truth plus application equals a firm foundation. See, truth plus application equals a firm foundation. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29, why don't you read along with me. It says, anyone who listens, this is Jesus speaking, who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Everyone say foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse like the image, the video we just saw with the mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. For he taught with real authority, unlike the teachers of religious law. So Jesus starts off this parable with a powerful and life-changing statement. That anyone who listens to his teachings and obeys it is wise. They build, it's like they're building a house on a solid rock. But we also see, this is interesting, that both the house that stood and the, and the house that crashed, they, listen to this, they, ha- they heard the same message. They both had the same opportunities. They both experienced the same circumstances, yet only one remained after the storm. Why? Because there's a difference between hearing and doing. We all know, we all know it's everywhere. On billboards, it's that eating healthy and exercise is good for us, but many people never do it. We know the Lord tells us in the Old Testament, and Jesus affirmed in the New Testament, to tithe 10% to him. Yet many people justify, Christians justify why they don't obey. We know that getting seven to eight hours of sleep is optimal and beneficial for our health. And yet many people push the limits and then just decide to live on caffeine. We know that if we speed on the highway that not only is it dangerous, but that we'll probably, in good chance, get a ticket. And yet, very few people drive the speed limit. We know teenagers, right? they know that studying gives you a higher chance of getting an A on the test. And yet, how many students still don't study? We know that flossing enhances brushing our teeth, and yet most people don't floss. And I'm not saying that to just bring all this, you know, like, guilt upon us this morning. I'm just saying there's a difference between knowing and there's a difference between doing. Information without application will always be void of transformation. It doesn't matter how much we know. It matters how much we do. And so Jesus points this picture that truth plus application equals a firm foundation. In 1174, the Italian architect, Bonanno Pisano, which is an amazing name, by the way. That's such a cool name. He was the one who was instrumental in leading the project of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's an eight-story bell tower that they built in the city of Pisa. And there was just a little problem is as they began to build the, leading, the Tower of Pisa, they began to realize that the, that the soil was a lot softer than they had first anticipated. And so the foundation was far too shallow shallow to hold the structure, and it began to lean. And they did all sorts of different things to try to fix the lean, but no matter what they did, it couldn't fix it. And so it has now leans 18 feet away from where it should be, and, and experts say that one day it will fall, but simply because it wasn't built on the right foundation. 
And according to Jesus, he says to build on the right foundation, to build on the rock is more than just hearing a sermon or hearing his teachings. It's more than listening to podcasts. It's more to watching YouTube videos. It is learning what Jesus says and then it is actually putting it into practice. Doing what he says we should do. Which is so interesting. See, not just to hear the words, but to follow the words. And yet, you know, there's so many Christians that over the course of time, they, they don't make it. I see so many Christians start off well, and they're excited for Jesus, and pretend that table is heaven. That's the finish line. And yet, as they take a couple steps, their foundation begins to crumble. And, and so I'm going to tell you, if you come to Christ so that way you could just simply feel better, you are building on the wrong foundation. If you come to Christ just because you think that, that it's going to make, um, you know, a better status or, or, or some kind of exterior motive, it's, it's the wrong foundation. Je- the Jesus says that we pick up our cross and we follow him because he's the Lord. We build our lives upon his word and upon his foundation. We will make it to the finish line. You know, in Greek, the word follow means to execute or to carry out, to follow through with what Jesus has said. Matthew chapter 7, this is interesting. You know, if you notice, we're, we're, we're starting at the end of Matthew chapter 7. We're kind of doing the, the four different twos in different, different order, but um, one scholar points out that in this, these four different examples, Jesus calls us to obedience. But in this one that we're talking about, the two builders, he shows us the fruit of obedience or the result of obedience. Because truth plus application equals a firm foundation. I remember one time, I shared this story before, when I was in college, Julie came with me back home to Michigan. She was staying with my grandma, and I, w- I was at my house, and I wanted to take her to Great Lakes Crossing. If, you, if you've been to Great Lakes Crossing, raise your hand. If you've been to Great Lakes Crossing, okay, a bunch of you haven't. You need to. Get with the people who just raised their hand, and they'll take you to Great Lakes Crossing. If you're online, go ahead and type in the comments if you've been there. It's just a huge mall with a bunch of stuff. You're going to spend a lot of money, so maybe you just shouldn't go. But anyways... I wanted to show Julie the Great Lakes Crossing, and my grandma, before we left, she said, you shouldn't go today because it's going to be a lot of snow. It's going to be a blizzard. And, I'm, and I heard her words. I had the information, but I didn't give the application. Instead, I said, that's nice, Grandma. Your grandma's, you know, everyone just smiles at Grandma. Grandma's sweet. They're always over-concerned, always over-paranoid. And so we went to Great Lakes Crossing. We got in, had a, had a great day together. It was a blast. And then we went to leave and exit, and we got to all the huge glass doors, and it was a blizzard outside. And it was chaos. And so it, it was intense how much snow was there. And we got to my, my vehicle, and it wouldn't start. And the battery had died. In a blizzard, in this parking lot, it was pandemonium. And at that moment, I wish I would have listened to my grandma. And in the same way, Jesus wants us to build our lives on his word. We open the word, we hear sermons, and that's great because that's the first step. But then to follow through and put into practice what he's telling us to do. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we going to hear and just go our own way? Or are we going to trust what Jesus says? Now, going back to the parable of both experienced storms, even if I want to highlight one quick thing here. Even if you are trusting Jesus, we see here that those who trust Jesus and those who aren't following Jesus still experience the same storms. And I just want to highlight that because some people come to Christ because they think that if I come to Jesus, then my life, everything is going to be just me made perfect, but the reality is that we still go through storms, but the difference is now we have a solid rock of Christ that we stand upon. And one scholar here, Liam Morris, says this, that this, the rain that they're talking about in this passage just clearly denotes heavy rain or torrential rain, not just ordinary gentle rain, but rain that tests the foundations of building, the rain that carries everything away. 
Kind of like this photo you're going to see here on the screen that this happened in Pakistan in 2022 is the kind of rain that this passage is talking about that's going to test the foundations is just tr- this kind of rain that normally can destroy things. And Jesus is saying that those who follow me are going to be tested. But if they follow my words and they build their lives on me, then their foundation is solid. Because not because we're great, but because Jesus is great. Not because we're secure, but because Jesus is secure. He is immovable. He is a solid rock. He is on the throne. He is in control. And we rest in him. We're going to make it and be okay. The the difference is, if you follow Christ, you won't end up with a dead battery. You won't crumble. You You will remain strong. That's why Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25 says this. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. So if you're facing a storm right now in your life, look for Jesus because he's right in the midst of it with you. Pause. If you're in a storm, pause and ask him to say, Jesus, help me see what you want me to see. Help me hear what you want me to hear. And stay anchored and lean into him and lean into the church family and continue to press in because truth plus application equals a firm foundation. But now contrast that quickly to verse 26. Jesus says this, anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, though, is foolish like someone who builds their house upon the sand. James chapter 1 verse 22 says it this way, don't just listen to God's word. But do what it says, otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. You know, Francis Chan did this illustration. I thought it was beautiful. How many of you have ever played the game Simon Says? Raise your hand. Yeah, I think everybody has. If you're online, go ahead and type in Simon Says. It's a timeless game. Even though I don't think anybody ever wins Simon Says. They, 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 they say they're going to do that, but because it takes so long, they end up just saying, hey, that 15 of you, go ahead, you win. And you're like, ah, I wanted to be the winner. But Simon says it is a fun game, but which if you didn't know, it, most people believe it started around 1764. So hundreds of years we've been playing Simon Says. That's a long time. But you know how it goes. Someone says Simon Says, stand up, and you stand up, and you listen to the commands. But if you stand up and Simon didn't say, then you are, you are out. But for some reason, when it comes to Jesus, we think his commands are optional. But I want want you to hear my heart. If you're a Christ follower, Jesus' commands are better than Simon says. If he says stand, then he has a good reason that he wants us to stand. If he says sit, then we sit. But Francis Chan also goes on to say this. This is so funny. He says, if I told my daughter to clean her room... And then three hours later, she comes up to me, and I asked her, did you clean your room? And she says, no, but I memorized exactly what you said to me and how you said it. We would know there's something wrong with that. And let's just say a couple more hours pass, and I see her walking out the door, so I stop and ask her, did you clean your room? And she says, no, but I'm going to Starbucks with my friends, and we're going to have a discussion about the best ways to clean a room. We would know that there's something wrong with that. And in the same way, we could have Bible studies and talk about all these great ways and all these things, and we could gather on Sunday mornings, but Jesus isn't impressed with any of that. But what builds a house on the solid foundation is actually doing the things that he asks us to do. That's why Dr. Tony Evans says this. This is a great, great statement. Where there is no application of spiritual truths, there is no solid foundation or fo- because our foundation determines our future. See, some people build their lives upon their career. It's their number one priority. Everything is just consumed with that. Others build their lives upon their children. And I've seen it. Families that just obsess about, they make their children a God and everything. Children's run the family. I've seen other people build their lives on sports and they worship idols of sports and making sure their kids in all their activities. 
Still others build their lives upon entertainment and always being busy. Others build their lives upon other things. And all and of these things are not bad. But they were never meant to be the foundation and the main priority of our lives. See, and when we do, and that becomes our focus, it's building a foundation that is upon sand. It is hearing the words of Jesus, but doing something completely different. All the while, if I could just be bold enough to say, we still try to stick a Jesus sticker on it so we feel better. But the odds are, parents, listen to me. The odds are your children are not going to be professional sports players. So don't let sports become an idol over Jesus and his church. Because listen, even if they do become a a, a professional sports player and they support you in retirement like you desire... If the foundation isn't Jesus, in the end, it's going to come crashing down. Remember, this, there's not only a present-day application in these four analogies of two. There's an eschatological, when we stand before God in the judgment, he isn't going to care how many trophies I have because he could speak and galaxies are created. He spoke everything that we see into existence with the command of his voice. He could care less if I bowl a 300 or not. And I didn't, which is sad. But, for instance, so I, as we close, I have an object lesson I want to show, want to show you. And, and let's just pretend that this, um, this water here represents God's word. Because what he likes to do is he likes to pour his word into our lives and, and have it stick. But I have three objects up here that represent three types of people. And this first one is a funnel. And uh, God pours his word into their lives. But what happens in a funnel? Comes in and it comes right out. And these, these type of people, they come to church and they might even watch stuff online and listen to podcasts and preachers and stuff. But there's no application. It comes in, it goes out. They leave, and the rest of the week, they live their lives however they want. But then you have some people that are like this sieve here. And when you pour water into the sieve, it's very similar to a funnel. It goes in and it comes out, but there's still some residue here. I can see like little droplets of water, and there's still, but when it gets shaken, all of it falls through, and none of it remains. See, but you and I were designed and created and called to be like the sponge. And when God pours his water on the sponge, what happens to the sponge? It absorbs it. It begins to go inside of it. And when it gets squeezed, it soaks it up. And it it just, and we were called to soak up the word of God, to be like a sponge that we don't just hear it, but then we absorb it and we make it a part of our lives. You say, well, how do I make it a part of my lives? By, by meditating upon it, thinking about it, and then doing what it says. Like when it says to forgive as you have been forgiven. You say, Jesus, this is difficult because this person really hurt me, but I want to be a sponge that, that puts your word into practice. I'm going to build my life upon you, not my emotions. And so, God, help me forgive. I, re- I release judgment against this person because your word trumps my experience. God, your word tells me to tithe, and I know that finances are tough and economy is tough. I live in the same economy you do, and yet, Jesus, I'm going to obey you in the tithe, not because I like it, but because I'm going to build my finances upon the rock that you have called me to because you are my Lord. I'm going to put it into practice. And so I want to just challenge you as we prepare to close. Just simply ask the Holy Spirit, what areas in my life do I know but not apply? I'm speaking spiritually specifically. And, and, and it, there's not judgment in that, but it, it, you can't change and I can't change if there's not awareness. And once we become aware, then the prayer is, Holy Spirit, will you help me? Will you help me begin to um, change and put your word into practice? 
that's when you talk to someone else within the church family. And that's why it's important to be connected in groups and say, you know what, here's an area that I'm struggling with that I, I know a lot of inf information, but man, not very much application. Will you, will you pray for me? And you can link arms and encourage each other so you don't, because you're not in this alone. It's not about perfection, it's about direction. Seeking and leaning into the Lord, following His commands, because truth plus application equals a firm foundation. Most of the people that you see in life, that you admire and that you respect, whether it's sports, whether it's spiritually, whether it's academically, most of those people behind the scenes are doing something consistently that has allowed them over the years to compound to get to where they are today, if that makes sense. Application, putting it into practice. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes as we wrap up this gathering today. You guys have been amazing. I so appreciate you and proud of you. And as we close, I always give an opportunity for people to accept Christ, and this would be a great day to do it because the, the slogan is, right, truth plus application equals a firm foundation. And, and so maybe you've heard truth, maybe you, you've been to church or you've, you've been online and you've watched sermons, but you have never have applied it to your life. By, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. And maybe you have never done that. And you say, today is the day I'm going to put my faith and trust in Jesus. I'm going to stop building my life on the foundation that I'm creating. And I'm going to build my life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And if that's you, will you pray with me quickly? Just say, Jesus, forgive me for building on a foundation other than you. I acknowledge, I confess my sins, my dependency on you. I give you my life. And I want to begin to follow you. I want to begin to trust you with my life and lifetime. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And if that's you this morning, you prayed that prayer to accept Christ and you are online and you uh, prayed that prayer, if you could email us at iprayed at wine.family.org, we would love to follow up with you and just encourage you however we can. If you're in the gathering and you prayed that prayer, I just always give an opportunity because I don't ever assume. And if that's you, we want to cheer you on. We want to celebrate and clap and go nuts. And if you said, Jeremy, I, I prayed that prayer with you, with you to cross the line to relationship with Christ, just simply raise your hand so we could clap with you and celebrate with you. If there's anybody here today, we, I see one hand over there. Guys, come on, let's go. Let's go. Awesome. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, if you could go ahead and, and stand up as we prepare to close. And I know um, we are going longer than normal, so I thank you, but I want to encourage you to, to stay, stay with me for this closing song. We're going to have the prayer team come forward at this moment if they could come forward and be ready to go. Um, I do have two announcements I want to make. They're kind of, I think they're important announcements. And so if you could just hang with me after the song, I'll have you stay seated. I'll make the two announcements and then you guys can be dismissed. So thank you for your grace there. So I'm going to pray and as the prayer team comes forward, if you need prayer for anything, we would love to pray for you. So God, I thank you so much for this message. God, I thank you, God, that, that your hand is upon our lives, that you love us, that you want us to be close to you. You want us to make it. Jesus, you paid the, the way through the cross. You died and rose again. And you have given us your word and you show us how to walk the path. God, of, of righteousness and following you through Jesus Christ. So Lord, will you help us be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. God, I know that we're not perfect. We fall short. That's why you died on the cross. God, we have a new identity. Christ in me, my new identity. But I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts in any areas where we need to begin to put it into practice. Lord, and I thank you for your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, we are going to build our house on you. Yes. No matter how countercultural it is, God, I pray we would just be the most loving, humble, Father serving, God, people in this community, that we would shine brightly your grace. God, that we would. God, begin to orient our lives around your word and that, God, we would see the strength that comes from you and from your spirit and your word. We love you. God, we thank you for your, your word. Lord, may our hearts be good soil. May we receive this today. God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can quickly be seated. I just want to give you two quick announcements. I appreciate your, your, your grace. Um, the, first, the first one is simply um, uh, an announcement about a while ago, we were encouraged and advised to increase the security of our church facility. And so within the last year, we added security cameras in the building. Um, I just want you to know this last Friday, we added six more. We added um, three more, excuse me, four more outside, so the complete front and the side of the parking lot is covered. And we also added two more to our kids area as well. And so we are protected with cameras that go there. We also added a new security mechanism in our office door. So during the week, the office door will be uh, always locked and there's a, a button to push to talk to our office coordinator, who is Carol. And at that moment, she could decide if she's gonna let you in or not. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure she'll let you in. Uh, but, uh, but no, she'll be able to respond accordingly. That way, um, there's more security. And one more thing that will affect you is we're uh, starting June 2nd, we're going to start locking the doors 15 minutes after the gathering starts. So there's only a handful that come in after that. And so if that's you, you know, we, we want to continue to maintain a culture of uh, family and uh, welcomeness. We've, we've worked hard over the last uh, 13 and a half years to do that. And so we're, we're working hard to maintain it. So we're going to have a security person there ready to welcome you. If for some reason you come in and it's 15 minutes past the gathering, we're, we're still expecting you. We're still welcoming you. The security person will be there to let you in with a smile on their face because we want to maintain that vision of, of being welcoming to everyone as well as valuing you and do whatever we can to increase the safety while you're here worshiping. Amen? So I just want to let you know that's going to uh, be happening starting June 2nd. The second announcement is that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, we believe in the next generation. We love teenagers and kids. They're not just the, the next generation. They are actually the now generation because there's no junior Holy Spirit. God ministers to kids and teens just like he does adults. And if you don't believe that, I want to challenge your belief structure a little bit. And you may not know, but in 2018, we launched a Next Gen Now campaign, and we made it, it made a tremendous impact. We transformed the, the Roots Room and made it what it is as of right now, so teenagers had their own space. We built two brand new classrooms in the back. Um, and then we had a, a, a kind of surprise city inspection, and we had to halt all new construction until we did what they asked us to do. And one of the things that we did was we put brand new electrical all in the ceiling. For some reason, they didn't like extension cords. And we had a lot of them. And, but we got rid of all of them and we had new wiring electrical put in the auditorium and we built that, that new handicap ramp when we built the stage. And now that that's all completed, we can move forward with new construction. And so we are going to be starting in September, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling you in advance, something called Next Gen Building the Future. See, because there's still some challenges, and I'll just give them to you really quick. The challenge is, is you can see all these holes along this side of the auditorium. All the noise that we make goes all the way in the back of the kids' area, and they have a hard time sometimes hearing and teaching because of the noise. And then, because we don't have permanent walls back there, 
um, they, they, when the kids are playing and the toddlers are playing, which they should, they're having fun, they're laughing, they're, you know, then all that noise bleeds over to the elementary age and then they're having a hard time focusing and hearing as well. And then um, if that's not enough, the kids gotta leave to go to the bathroom and we don't want that to happen. And then this is very comical. People get walking down the hallway, they forget that there's holes everywhere. They think their conversation is confidential. And sometimes it's funny as I'm laughing, I'm like they don't think I can hear, but I hear everything they're saying over there. Um, so our vision is we want to create a more conducive environment for our children. So we plan to build a, per, a permanent wall in the back where tree house is with windows allowing for a clear view to see what if everything is taking place. Then the walls in the older classrooms, we're going to demolish all the walls and, and build one giant new larger classroom. And we're also going to construct a new hallway with an emergency exit just in case there was, they ever needed that. And then uh, there's going to be two kids' bathrooms so the kids will ever have to leave the kids' area to use the restroom. And adults, we haven't forgotten you. Um, part of that, we're going to add one new, while we're doing the kids' blast bathrooms, we're going to add one new adult bathroom. Um, so there'll be three unisex uh, adult bathrooms. But also to help with the noise, we're going to close all these entrances and exits and holes on this side. And we're going to take both of these walls and go finish it going up to the ceiling and add doors, uh, get rid of the curtains and add doors as entrances into the auditorium. And when that is all finished, then we should be able to um, get loud in here. They can get loud in there and we won't be able to, we won't hinder each other. So if, if you're, you may be wondering though, why are you telling us this now if this is going to be not starting to September? Well, the reason being is because we want you to do two things. We want you to pray. Lord, what do you want me to give starting in September to the next gen building the future? And number two is friends of Wyandotte family. What I mean by that is people who haven't attended Wyandotte family have played a tremendous role in the, um, the last 13 and a half years of our church. People who don't attend here have given to Wyandotte family very generously. And each and every one of you, including myself, know people that may be willing to give to something like this so that kids and in uh, the next generation can grow up and learn about God and we, and we can continue to do it without hindrance. And so uh, we want you to begin to pray not only what you, what you can give, but also, um, God, who can I share the vision with and ask them to give? And so we're giving you a couple of months to let the Spirit speak and build that up. And then in September, we will um, give uh, more, more information, like more like actual practical details of cost. And, and, and how we're going to do it this year, just this time around, is uh, we're hiring a, a contractor to manage it for us and to lead it for us. We did it previously in-house, but just so you know, when we're at Bible college, they don't teach us how to manage building projects. I'm just telling you, they, they did. And so uh, whatever, we're trying to manage it. it. It may get done, but it might not get done the most efficient way. And so uh, we're going to just hire someone to manage that who's a professional, who knows what they're doing, who knows the ins and outs. And so as, once we get a final cost analysis, we'll, we'll update you, and we'll try to give updates every month along the way as we approach September. Amen? So all right, so um, a couple of things. Let me just pray for you, and we'll have an official dismissal. Uh, we do have party with the pastors. If you are newer to Wyandotte family you, and you have questions, you want to meet the, the leadership, we're going to be in the room called the Roots Room. It's where our teenagers uh, have youth on Sunday nights. We would love for you to join us. Um, please take your communication cards to the uh, Connection Center. And then lastly, tonight, our teenagers will be meeting, our kids will be in the back, and adults will be in here watching Chosen Episode 8, the grand finale of Season 1. So, God, I thank you for everyone's um, grace and just uh, the patience with us today. Holy Spirit, thank you for speaking to us and meeting with us today. God, thank you for moving during the worship time and speaking to us through your word. God, thank you for being a good God. Lord, I, I pray that everyone in this church will know that we don't have to walk this life alone. 
that, God, we can partner together to build each other up and encourage each other. So, Lord, as we now gather, we're now going to scatter. Help us be the hands and feet of Jesus as we go to work tomorrow, as, as teenagers go to school, as college students go to school. Lord, I pray that we would be your hands and your feet to a world that desperately needs the light and love of Jesus. And I thank you for it. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can have a great day. Let's go.